Uh, happy Sunday, everyone. Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, gear. Sort of. We're going to talk about gear storage. <laughs> So the first part of this that I want to get immediately out of the way is that if you follow me on Instagram or have read what I've written on my website, you know that I identify myself as a minimalist. So as a minimalist, how can I have all of this? And so the answer is, first off, minimalism is defined by the person as suits them. I get to decide what I'm minimalist about, but I really am pretty minimalist about my gear. I don't buy gear just because I want it because it looks cool. If I do buy new gear, it is usually replacing a piece of gear that I'm retiring. There are a handful of pieces of gear that I have specifically for work as opposed to specifically for my play. Um, and when I get free gear, which is usually not expensive gear, I get free dry bags, I get um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I generally give that stuff away. So that said, let's talk about how I store my gear. So this is my office. If you follow me, you've seen my office. I shoot a lot of video in here. I designed the structure, for lack of a better word, behind me after something I saw in a yoga studio and use a concept that I learned from Adam Savage from Mythbusters and tested the concept of first order retrieval. Uh, and it's, I don't really have first order retrieval, but first order retrieval is that if you need a screwdriver, the screwdriver is right there. This isn't a screwdriver, but it was right there. And you don't have to dig to get it. And so that was sort of how I built my gear system. So the system is designed so that if I need a piece of gear, I can go exactly to where that piece of gear is. If I need a stove, I've got a bin full of stoves. If I'm teaching a class on water filters, I can just grab the whole bin of water filters, right? The key to that though, is putting stuff away. So like this headlamp, which was just sitting here on my desk, that's not where it belongs. It belongs in a bin. And the bin it belongs in, appropriately, is called light. Here's light. So I can just pull the bin out, open it up, and everything in here that is light related is in here. So multiple headlamps, flashlights, I don't know why I have four flashlights, and bike lights are things that fall into the light category. When I'm done, put the lid back on and the whole thing goes back where it belongs. Similarly, if I need stoves, all of my stoves are in here. So Whisper Lights, Jet Boil, Pocket Rocket, Mighty Mo, which is one of my favorite little stoves. Pocket Rocket I actually got for free. I kept it. I use it in classes a lot. So stoves has its own bed. As does fuel. As does power. And power is solar panels and batteries and stuff like that. This one's called H2O. It's all water filters and water storage. Stuff like that. This is a small... This is a smaller bin. Well, the same size bin. It has less stuff in it. Uh, this is my sale bin. So my logbook for all the sales that I do. A single dry bag, some pack towels, my gloves, my tether. My PFD, sailing PFD doesn't fit in here. Um, I'll show you where that is in a minute. Another important one is bug and sun. So all sunscreens, all bug sprays. Lately, I'm really digging this stuff. Really good. Gets its own bit. I frequently get messages from people saying, hey, I'm going to this place. What should I go see? I got one right now. Let me just deal with that real quick. This bin just got an update. It went from a small bin to a bigger bin because I just have too much stuff. It, the, the bin just was done. So this is my nav bin. It's got all of my navigational tools, the nice kit that I just had made, um, all of my compasses, all of my maps and charts, um, rulers, binoculars, pencils, all my nav stuff is in here. Even my GPS is in here. 
The only bin that I have that is more than one bin is med-related stuff. And so I have two bins, a small one, all the stuff that goes inside a first aid kit. And then I have a bigger bin, which is med gear, which is empty first aid kits that I can build when I need to, um, some books, some paperwork stuff that I use when I teach, uh, stethoscopes, BP cuffs, trauma shears, all that stuff lives in the big case. These lower bins are stuff that I use a little bit less often. Um, this is what used to be my drone bag when I had a big, gigantic uh, Phantom 4. Uh, and now it holds all of my camera gear. That's how much space there is. I can fit my Mavic Air in it. It's got um, my DSLR, a waterproof point and shoot, all of my GoPro accessories, with some exceptions. Um, and then this is a bin called gear to fix or sell. And so I've got some gear that I need to get rid of still. And then I've got some gear that I need to fix. And in there, I also keep the stuff I use to fix gear. So patch kits and glues and stuff like that. And then on this side, well, then on this side is kitchen gear. Um, and so this is some food stuffs that's of course shelf stable, like freeze dried food and stuff like that, but pots and plans, pots and pans and plates and coffee makers and all that stuff lives inside here and it's pretty full. This is gonna get broken out into a second bin. Stay, a second bin at some point, but that's what's inside there. This stuff, which is up high, I don't think you can see me, is uh, water bottles and hydration reservoirs and stuff like that. I'm not sure why those cups are there. It might just be because they don't fit in kitchen. Uh, and then over here is fuel stuff that doesn't fit in the little fuel bin. So um, propane cylinders and uh, liquid fuel lives up there. And then over here I have coolers. I'm not quite sure why I have that still. Over here I have coolers, which I use an apps, an, a ton. I use coolers all the time. Um, and this is the uh, newly invented uh, ceiling fan mount. Pretty crazy actually. This is the mid-height level or I guess the top of my rack and this has um, all of my shelters and tables and chairs are right here so they're super easy to grab. This stuff really is first order retrieval. Um, over here I've got um, sleeping pads and, and some tarps and ground cloths and things like that. And then this needs a better home because we're always refining. This is my work first aid kit. So it doesn't really fit in there. It doesn't belong to me, but I do keep it indoors just so that the stuff that's in it doesn't get destroyed in the sun blazing summer heat. Um, so that's middle section. And then this is one of my favorite sections. This is the hanging section where I keep raincoats and Fowleys and stuff like that, as well as a couple of backpacks, a little day pack, a big backpack, and um, and my sailing PFD, my offshore PFD. Um, and I use these really great hangers that I saw. Actually, I saw them first at Knowles, Mexico, and I picked up some, and they are sensational for dry suit and fowleys and stuff like that. Those work really well. And the, the bar, I needed a, a bar for, to hang them on, is an old axe handle and um, the axe head broke off and so I just cut it to size and it works perfectly and it's super cool and it's repurposing. The other part of my GoPro stuff is this, which is a Sortimo case. And um, I like this because you can grab out the bin, like that's all my SD cards, and just grab the stuff that you need. Here's this stuff. Um, it's super nice. Here's my timer. Uh, it's super nice. Again, I got this from Adam Savage. He's a little fanatical about his gear storage. He is definitely not a minimalist. Uh, and so this is uh, uh, the Bosch version of Sortimo. Uh, in the United States, Bosch is Sortimo, I guess. Yeah, so that's all the little stuff. Uh, and then when I'm going out to paddle or something like that, I grab what I need from here and put it in here. Uh, and so I've got it in the cockpit with me and it's waterproof and it's good to go. Here's where I start to get into trouble. This bin is sort of a catch-all for things that don't have homes. So I've got my two primary backpacks here, a 40 and a 48, and then some waterproof storage containers, bike helmets, bike panniers. The light bin is currently up here. This is an empty bin that needs to figure out what it's for. This is my VHF radio. I've got my fire starting kit down there. 
And so um, a, a lot of it is just sort of catch-all stuff. A couple of clipboards that I use for work. This needs sort of a better organization to it. It works okay as these are the things that I really grab from a lot, but uh, it's, a, it's still a little too messy. I'm not the neatest person in the world, but this drives me a little bit crazy. The final part of this stuff up here, forgive the light, is um, my bear canister, which has stuff in it for the bear classes that I teach, uh, food storage bags, a backup seat for my boat, odds and ends. This is a bag of older camera stuff and the foam that I use to tweak the cockpit of my boat. So a bunch of just sort of littler filler stuff. A really old whiskey decanter I keep up there too. This is one of my favorite areas in the whole place and I put it specifically on the end in the corner. It's relatively small and it's just for for charging batteries. So I've got a power strip here. I can grab a GoPro battery from a bulk charger if I need one um, or drop them off when I do need them or when I need to charge them or drop in a DeWalt battery to charge up really quick. And then the drone charger is here and all, all my batteries are right here for charging. So it's super easy to just drop something off and get a charge going or pick something up when you need it. There's always a charged battery in here for my GoPro ready to go. I like this spot. It's a good spot. The final actual bin in the thing that I built is this lower left-hand corner, which is sort of the out-of-the-way corner, but I really do use it a lot, and it's because it's got all my tools in it, most of my tools in it. And so that bin has stuff left over from when I was doing some fiberglass repair last year, so I'm not in there as much, but I'm in here all the time. That's where that is. This bucket of tools is um, is the stuff that I'm using on a daily basis to do something to the van or to fix a piece of gear. And if you've got a big collection of gear, you, um, you always have gear to fix. So I access that all the time. I actually have another bucket with tools and stuff in it just for doing electrical work. And that right now is in the van as I'm finishing up phase two of the van stuff. And so that's the last bin, tools, ready access to stuff. And this really is first order retrieval, which I'm super proud of. Not part of the bin, but important nonetheless, is my library. Now, as a minimalist, I don't have that many books. I give away a lot of books. If you know me, I've probably given you a book. And when I give books, I generally don't expect to get them back. And so I have a relatively small library of stuff that I use for reference. So, for instance, lately I'm reading um, this old book called Sail Power which was actually a, a gift. It's, it was written in the 70s and it's about maximizing power out of your sales. This is a copy of the classic Chapman piloting, which I got for like 75 cents. These are all of my Knowles books, uh, educator notebooks and the Sea Ski Kayak Instructor book and leadership book. Uh, those I reference a lot when I'm teaching, a Leave No Trace book, some cooking books. This is the really cool Knowles lightning book that I use when I teach the lightning aspect of WFA courses, and then kayaking books, and then some books that I just read for fun. Some of them are outdoor related, some of them are just for fun. So books are super important. And then I've got some, this is all, you know, business stuff and paperwork and photos and stuff. So even as a minimalist, I have some junk. <sighs> there is still a little bit more gear. Let's go see that. So the only gear that's not in there is gear that lives in the van all year long. This is my paddling gear. Uh, with the exception of my dry suit, which only comes out here in the winter, my paddling gear is always in here because my boat is always up there. With very few exceptions, my boat is on the roof 365 days a year. And, uh, and that's because I paddle 365 days a year. And so there are times when I'm like, oh, it's two in the afternoon and I've got nothing to do. I've got all my gear, let's go paddling. That sort of easy access is something that I really enjoy, and so the paddling gear really just stays here. It lives in a mesh bag so that, uh, so that things are, are, can air out and dry. My paddle shoes hang on the other door so that they're always ready to go, and, uh, and I'm ready to paddle. So that's how I deal with my gear. I know it seems like a lot, but I really use everything that I've got. Stuff that I don't use, I give away or I sell. I want to know how you deal with your gear. Leave me a comment, a link below to 
Instagram or a website or something like that. I know a lot of outdoor educators that I work with take as much pride in their gear storage as I do, and so I expect to see those sort of linked below. Uh, and actually, I'll call out a woman I used to work with, who I'm still friends with, uh, Wayfinder Alley, her YouTube channel. I want you to do a gear storage video. I want to see your gear storage. And next week, I, at some point, I want to talk about authenticity in the outdoors. It's something I've been thinking a lot about. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, hit the like button here, hit subscribe and hit the little bell and come back and see me next Sunday is when I think that video will go live. If I can get the words straight in my head, I'm just sort of processing authenticity on a big scale for people in the outdoors. I'm, I'm curious to have that discussion. Okay, I'll see you next week, and I'll see you outside.